This video provides a crib sheet for introductory undergraduate statistics. The materials on the left describe probability distributions, averages, and variances, and the materials on the right describe the concept of statistical independence and its consequences. It is important to understand statistical independence because this idea underlies many of the convenient formulas used in laboratory uncertainty propagation. When we roll a die 100 times, we get 100 outcomes, not necessarily all the same. In one particular roll, we might get a lower number of dots, while in another particular roll, we might see a higher number of dots. This plot indicates that we happened to have obtained 1 dot 5 times, 2 dots 8 times, 3 dots 22 times, and so forth. This distribution, this probability distribution, is not perfectly uniform. Part of the reason that this plot is not perfectly flat could include that the die was manufactured with its weight distributed unevenly so that it is rigged or unfair. It is conventional to divide each of the numbers of outcomes here, 5, 8, 22, 25, 15, and 23, by their sum, by the total number of trials here, 100. The normalized quantities 0 0.05, 0 0.08, 0 0.22, and so forth are called the probabilities or frequencies, capital P. These decimal quantities add up to unity. For each outcome, meaning one dot up, or two dots up, or three dots up, and so forth, assign a value to the function a on x, to the function b on x, and to the function c on x. In this example, function c on x is a constant function that always returns the number c regardless of the number of dots facing up. Because distributions may involve plotting many numbers, we often use small collections of numbers, or so-called statistics if you will, to attempt to characterize distributions concisely. In some situations, these statistics provide enough information for a particular application, but in other situations, detailed knowledge of the full distribution is required. In this slide deck, we will introduce two commonly used statistics, the average and the variance. The so-called average or mean is sometimes used as a representation of a so-called typical value for a distribution. We denote the average value of the function a using the Greek letter mu or angle brackets. Both notations mean the same thing. We are writing down a sum of values of the function a over values of the number of dots x using the probability function p on x as our weighting factor. We illustrate this equation using a concrete example. When x equals 1, a on x equals 3. x equals 1 also means that the value of the probability distribution p on x equals 5 out of 100. The product 3 times 0 0.05 is one term in the summation. To complete the summation, we also need to add up products corresponding to other values of x. In this example, the average equals 4.88. Before we move on to the variance, we first provide some useful identities relating to the average. We will use the table to construct an example of an average of a sum. We will calculate the average of a plus b. The sum a on x plus b on x resides inside the square brackets, which in its entirety is multiplied by the probability distribution p on x. Multiply distributively to get a factor of p on x next to a on x and another factor of p on x next to b on x. Break the sum into two pieces, both indexed so as to explore the values of x, and recognize that the first sum is the average of a while the second sum is the average of b. The average of a plus b equals the average of a plus the average of b. The average of the sum equals the sum of the averages. To illustrate this expression with a concrete example, we use the numbers in the table. A plus B is pink plus orange. These colors appear in the first column of parentheses. The remaining column of yellow text enumerates the probabilities. Multiply the yellow probabilities distributively against the pink values of A and the orange values of B. This splits the single column into two columns, one with the values of A weighted by the probabilities, and the other with the values of B also weighted by the probabilities. The contents of the first column add up to the average of A. The contents of the second column add up to the average of B. The average of the sum equals the sum of the averages. The average of the sum equals the sum of the averages. The second identity we will present involves the average of a constant times a function. The average of c times a is calculated by placing the product of c on x and a on x inside the sum, weighted by the probability distribution p on x. 
For each value of x, c on x always returns the constant c. A constant factor that multiplies each term implied by a sum can be factored outside to the left. Only the functions a and p remain in the sum, which is thus the average of a. When calculating the average of a constant times a function, the constant can be factored out to the left. As our last identity on this page, we will look at the average of a constant. Take the average of the function c by taking a weighted sum in which the constant c is repeatedly multiplied against the weight p on x. Factor the constant c out from the sum, and the only contents that remain inside are the values of p at various values of x. We said that the probability distribution is normalized to add up to 1, so we find that the average of a constant is the constant itself. We have just explored the definition of the average and some related identities. The average is sometimes regarded as a typical value of a distribution. It is important to remember that not all outcomes coincide precisely with this value. We now develop a statistic for describing typical excursions from average. We begin with a naive concept of a deviation. Delta A is defined as a particular value of A minus its average value mu sub A. The Greek letter delta here denotes the difference between a particular value and the average of the distribution from which the particular value is drawn. What is the average of the deviation? Because the average of the sum is the sum of the averages, we can express the average of delta A as the difference between bracket A and bracket mu sub A. Because mu sub A is a constant, the average of mu sub A is simply mu sub A itself, leaving us with the average of A minus the average of A or zero. The average of the deviation from average is always zero. We always get the same answer. Because this equality holds regardless of the distribution, we are motivated to develop an alternative statistic that may provide more information about excursions from average. To address this need, we define the variance as the average of the square of the deviation. Take the difference a minus mu sub a, square it, and average it. The variance is usually denoted sigma sub a squared. To obtain a form more convenient for computation, FOIL, that is multiply distributively, the square binomial in the angle brackets to the right. Remembering that the average of the sum is the sum of the averages, we split the average of three terms into a sum of three terms. The terms minus 2 mu sub a and mu sub a squared are both constants over the probability distribution, so the minus 2 times mu sub a can be moved outside its angle brackets and the average of mu sub a squared is simply mu sub a squared itself. Because mu sub a and bracket a are alternative forms for notating the same thing, that being the average of a, the middle term is simply negative 2 times the square of the average of a, and the last term is positive 1 times the square of the average of a. Consolidating these two last terms, we obtain the so-called computing formula for the variance. The variance is the average of the square minus the square of the average. In the first term, the square appears on the inside of the angle brackets, and on the second term, the square appears on the outside of the angle brackets. This formula can be memorized using the inside-out mnemonic. Up to this point, we have considered experiments whose outcomes could be characterized using a single variable. For the case of the roll of a die, a single variable x represents the number of dots that appear face-up at the end of a roll. In many experiments, outcomes can only be fully represented using multiple variables. We illustrate an example in which the outcomes land in a two-dimensional state space. Outcomes are represented by the values of x and a second variable y. The analog of our previous bar chart is a three-dimensional collection of building blocks. The probability distribution is again normalized, meaning that the numbers of each outcome are divided by the total number of outcomes, so that the probability distribution sums up to 1. When discrete jumps between neighboring positions in state space are small, the pile of blocks appears to be replaced by a blanket which we stylize using a wireframe. We provide a second example in yellow to the right in order to point out an interesting feature by which we can distinguish these two distributions. This red curve traces out the values of the orange probability distribution for a variety of values of y, but only a single value of x, call it x1. 
We trace out this second red curve by holding x constant at a different position x2. For small values of y, both red curves start out relatively high, then both curves have decreasing height with increasing y. However, whereas the curve held at x equals x1 rebounds, the vertical height of the curve held at x equals x2 continues to decrease. The red curves have distinct shapes. The shape of the red curve depends on the particular value at which x is held constant. This red curve is constructed on the yellow wireframe by holding x at x1, and this second red curve is constructed on the same wireframe by holding x instead at x2. Compared to the red curves constructed from the orange wireframe, these red curves look more like each other. As y increases, both curves decrease, hit a minimum, and then rebound. In loose terms, the yellow wireframe has the simple property where the variation of y is independent of x. Speaking a little more carefully, the function p on x2, y looks the same as the function p on x1, y, except for a multiplicative factor that does not depend on y. In the example wireframe illustrated in yellow, the red curve associated with x2 has the same overall shape as the red curve associated with x1, but the curve associated with x2 is reduced in height by a multiplicative factor, m, that is the same for all values of y. We denote this factor m on x2 to indicate that this factor might change if we move the value of x2. To tidy up notation, we rename x2 as simply x. X is now a parameter that indicates the position, along the axis pointing into and out from the page, of the red curve previously labeled P on X2, Y. Replace the letter M with the symbol P sub X and replace the symbols P, open parenthesis X1, comma, and the closed parenthesis with P sub Y, open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. The yellow wireframe is simple in the sense that the probability distribution p on x, y can be expressed as a product of two separate factors. p sub x depends only on x, and p sub y depends only on y. It is said that the probability distribution factorizes. This is a mathematical expression of the idea that x and y are statistically independent. Again, the graphical expression is provided by the yellow wireframe. Regardless of whether we consider the outcomes for which x as x was originally defined before it became synonymous with x2, regardless of whether we considered the outcomes for which x was x1 or instead was x2, the relative likelihoods for getting different values of y were the same. For any one given value of x, small values of y were most likely, big values of y were moderately likely, and intermediate values of y were least likely. This was true at x1 and x2. Knowledge or specification of x did not provide information regarding the distribution with respect to y. Thus, the distribution with respect to y is independent of x. The factor p sub y on y does not see the variable x. In the same way, the distribution with respect to x is independent of y. The factor p sub x on x does not see the variable y. Reminiscent of the single variable case, it is conventional to normalize the individual probability distribution factors to 1. To obtain some formulas that facilitate computations when working with statistically independent variables, we introduce the function a on x, y, which here is really a function only of x, and the function b on x, y, which here is really a function only of y. Calculating the average of a function of a single variable means, for example, calculating the average of a. This is the sum of a weighted by the probability distribution p on x, y. The nested double sum covers all the values of x and y that represent possible outcomes. Replace p on x, y with p sub x on x, p sub y on y. The quantities a on x and p sub x on x are functions of x alone and are constants as far as the sum over y is concerned, so they can be factored out. The quantity remaining in the big parentheses is a normalization. It equals 1. The average of a is a sum of a weighted by the single variable probability distribution factor p sub x on x. When we have statistical independence between the relevant variables, the average of a function of a single variable can be calculated using a single variable probability distribution factor, rather than requiring use of the entire multidimensional probability distribution. The final two results we will derive in this video involve the covariance. 
it is important to review this section carefully because it underpins many formulas used routinely in the analysis of experimental uncertainty the covariance of a with b is the average of the product of the deviation of a multiplied against the deviation of b on this page we are working in the context in which a and b are independent meaning that they do not see each other's variables but the word covariance is also used when the functions a and b are not necessarily independent the variance is a special case where the so-called two functions are the same the contents of this double sum include factors of stuff related to the deviation of a to the deviation of b and to the probability distribution p with p expressed in factorized form neither the deviation of a nor the probability distribution factor p sub x on x depends on x so as far as the sum over y is concerned these factors are constants that can walk out to the left the contents that remain within the sum over y depend only on y they have no dependence on x so as far as the sum over x is concerned the contents of the big parentheses are also a constant that can be factored out to the left the sum over y inside the big parentheses to the left is multiplied against the sum over x by comparison with the definition of the deviation of a variable and with the formula for the average of a function of a single variable we can see that the first sum is the average of the deviation of b and the second sum is the average of the deviation of a because the average of a deviation is always zero the product of two averages of deviations is also zero and thus the covariance for independent functions a and b is also zero our final result relates to the addition of functions consider the function f on x comma y a sum of a first part a that depends only on x and a second part b that depends only on y using the usual definition of deviation delta f is defined as a particular value of f minus its average value mu sub f according to the definition of f we have just stated and according to the identity that states that the average of a sum is the sum of the averages we can rewrite delta f explicitly in terms of a x b y and the average values of a and b rearrange the contents of the difference of square brackets to show that the deviation of f is the sum of the deviation of a and the deviation of b this means that the average of the square of the deviation of f is the average of the square of the sum of the deviations of a and b foil meaning multiply distributively the average of a sum is the sum of the averages and constants can factor out of angle brackets so we write angle brackets separately for these three terms with the coefficient of two pulled outside the middle pair of brackets the middle term is a covariance of independent variables so it equals zero the average of the square of the deviation of f equals the average of the square of the deviation of a plus the average of the square of the deviation of b the variance of f is equal to the variance of a plus the variance of b if a and b are independent the variance of a sum is equal to the sum of the variances if a and b are independent the variance of a plus b is equal to the variance of a plus the variance of b in this video we have introduced probability distributions and statistics including the average and the variance we have derived a collection of formulas to facilitate computation these include the formula we just obtained on the last slide for the special context of statistically independent variables the variance of a sum equals the sum of the variances this formula is used as the starting point for deriving various expressions used routinely in the calculation of experimental uncertainties both because this formula is based on an assumption about statistical independence that does not always hold true, and because this formula is so widely used, understanding of this formula's derivation is essential for the proper analysis of data.